pastors here, and um, Pastor John is actually away in Arkansas, and so um, he is doing a sons and daughters conference down there. So he will be back tomorrow, but you guys can just be praying for him for safe travels and that he'll get back safe and sound. But um, God is definitely doing some things down there also. And so we're just excited to see what God has in store for us this morning. So if you are new and um, we'd like just to welcome you um, here, you can scan the QR code up here. You can grab the connect card in the back of the seat um, just to be able to connect with you and, and stuff like that. So feel free to do that. Um, I'm going to pray for the morning offering, and then we're going to receive that this morning. So, Lord, we just thank you, Lord, um, as we just continue in our an act of worship to you. As we give back to you, I just pray right now that you um, bless the gift and the giver, God, that we can just further your kingdom and all that you've called us to do here at 970. In your son's name, amen. amen. We have a few announcements this morning. Um, I believe the first one is going to be this Wednesday night. Um, we have our youth night. It's changing from Friday to Wednesday. It's going to be here at, at the Oasis, so please feel free to come here um, at 6 p.m. Uh, be here, and we're going to uh, have some pizza and some other stuff. So do that. Also, church potluck, uh, bring your dessert or dish to pass. That is next Sunday right after service. We forgot to, well, we sort of announced it last week, but... Uh, it was like a little quick, a little blurb. So uh, please feel free to come. We're going to be uh, doing that and just being able to fellowship with one another. So that's right after service. Also, church membership will be August 26th at 9 a.m. So if you want to become a church member and have not yet, but want to, willing and wanting to do that, all are welcomed. But um, it'll be at 2, 2764 Compass Drive on the second floor conference room. So feel free to, to meet us there. Also, Sons and Daughters Conference is Friday through Sunday, September 22nd through the 24th. We'll have a Friday night service, a Sunday or a Saturday morning, and a Saturday night service, and then a Sunday morning service. You're not going to want to miss that. So feel free to come to that also. And that's Friday through Sunday, September, whatever that was, the 22nd through the 24th. Sweet. So uh, Pastor John asked me last week, he said, hey, Bo, I'm going to be out of town. Would you be willing to preach? And I reluctantly said yes. So, just kidding. Um, I knew it was coming at some point, but um, today I just wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about what the Lord's um, done in my heart and my life over the last couple of years, um, and partly because um, I know I haven't had an opportunity to share and uh, be able to speak and, and preach and, and that kind of stuff here, and so I just really felt like it was important for you guys to know where I've come from and what God's done, um, specifically in the last probably eight years of our lives, Linda's in my life. And so, for those who don't know, um, I've been a pastor since 2005. Um, we, uh, both my wife and I, Linda and I, grew up in Michigan about seven miles apart from each other, and we did not know each other until college. And um, her eyes met mine, and she was just like, ooh, I like that guy. And um, <laughs> so it was all her, and um, she pursued me. And so that's the end of the story. We're just leaving it at that. And she doesn't have a mic, so she can't agree or disagree. So, but she is. She will. She will correct me uh, later. But um, but we did a master's commission for ten years, and um, master's commission totally changed my life. And um, it's, it was a nine-month discipleship training where um, it was really uh, beneficial. I knew I had a call in my life when I was in high school. Um, it was probably my junior year of high school. I remember um, being at a basketball camp, and my parents were fashionably late to pick me up at camp. And so I was outside um, walking up and down. It was at Adrian College at the time. Um, and um, I just remember, actually it was at Siena Heights, excuse me, it was at Siena Heights College, a university now. And um, I remember preaching to the trees and um, doing altar calls to the trees and knowing that God had something in store for me. Um, didn't know what, had no clue, just knew that um, God uh, wanted me to go into full-time ministry. And, um, and then after that, went into college and just ran away. I wouldn't say ran away from the Lord, but definitely put the Lord on the back burner. And, um, and then Linda and I met when we were, um, after I did three years of master's commission out in Spokane, Washington, and um, the rest is history there. But I did 10 years in, in Michigan, and in that time, there was a lot of hurt and pain that God, or that 
that happened in my life and my wife's life. And um, ministry is not always fun and it's not always easy. Um, not knowing that, I think I would have, uh, if I would have known that back when I was in uh, a junior in high school, I think I might have like at least contemplated a little bit more and not said yes right away, you know. But God, God did, I did not know that, so God said that. I'm like, yes, God, I want to go into ministry. That's what I'm going to do the rest of my life, and I want to serve you. And um, not knowing some of the things, but as ministry happened, and as things happen, and as life in general happens, there was a lot of hurt and pain that happened. And so how many of us know that Jesus is a prime example of what we need to do? And so um, by you guys saying amen, I'm going to share something later. And just remember you said amen, okay? So, and I'll bring it back full circle here in a little bit. But that, um, that time there we moved to Kearney, Nebraska, and I was associate pastor in Kearney, Nebraska. And there was a prayer that I started to pray for a long time, and I've been constantly praying it since then. It says, break my heart for what breaks yours, God. Break my heart, God, for what breaks yours. Why? Because I want to have a heart after God. I want to have a heart that pleases God. I want to have a heart that, that reflects the presence of God. And so I I was praying that prayer, God, break my heart for what breaks yours. And there was another prayer that I started praying that um, was, was this, give me supernatural love for one another. Give me supernatural love for the people around me that you've placed in my life. And, and the reason why I started praying that prayer is I read a book by Francis Chan. It was called Letters to the Church. And that just, that tore me apart. It just, it totally changed. It, it was a paradigm shift in my mind and my heart. And, um, there was a story in there, and I'm not going to share the whole story. You can go back and actually read the book. But um, it was, it was um, God giving supernatural love. Um, and, and so I'm like, Lord, I want that supernatural love. It's easy to love my wife. It's easy to love my kids. It's easy to love my family. But I want supernatural love for, for one another. And the reason I started praying that was, one, because of that book. Two, was because I went to a corn concert. Um, and what does corn concert have to do with, with loving God? Doesn't make sense. But um, so my wife Linda's boss in Nebraska was really close friends with Brian Head Welch. And, um, and so we decided that um, my senior pastor there is like, hey, do you want to go to a corn concert with us? And I said, sure. Don't necessarily, don't necessarily love the music, but I want the opportunity to minister to people. And so after the concert, we had the opportunity to minister to people and pray over and prophetically speak into their lives. And so, um, at the concert, I don't even remember what the band was playing, but um, there was a band that was playing right before Corn, and I stood in the back of the, this auditorium, this, you know, arena, and I walked in, and I, I was looking at uh, all these people, thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people, I don't know what, hundred thousands exaggerating, some would say 20, 30,000, and they had the mosh pit up in the front, and I started weeping. And... I am weeping in the middle of a concert that I probably should not be weeping about, you know, like type of a thing. And I'm like, I said, Lord, what's going on? He said, I'm giving you that supernatural love. Those people there need me. And the only difference between you and them is that you know the answer and they do not. And so my heart broke for what broke the Lord's that day. And I can look back on that day and know that God totally did a paradigm shift in my heart and in my life. That he started to fill me with the love that he has for people. And what does that have to do with forgiveness? Well, the Bible says in Mark 12, 30, it says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is like this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. So I felt like I had to love the Lord your God with all your heart down. You know, I, I was been a pastor at that time for about 10 to 12 years, and I'm like, I, I love God pretty good, but love your neighbor as yourself. Like, who's my neighbor? And so I started really digging deep into that. Who is my neighbor? What does that mean? I, I mean, I love my next-door neighbor. Like, we hung out some, and I love my neighbors too. still. I got neighbors sitting right here, you know, here in Grand Junction. You know, like, God 
showed me that it was just more than just my neighbor right next to me. It was that person that cussed me out. It was that person that spat in my face. It was that person that beat me down. It was that, that person in the church that, that did some major damage, that backstabbed me, that hurt me. And I'm telling you, like, my wife and I, like, there were so many things that were said to us in our first 10 years of ministry that we carried with us. We had people say, you should get divorced. We had people that said that, um, why'd you ever marry Bo? He's a jerk, and yada, yada. I mean, I can go on and on and on, which I don't care to. But the point is, is God said to love those people too. And I'm like, I really don't want to. Like, they really hurt me. Like, I like where I'm at right now. <laughs> like, but the problem was, is it was coming from a victim mentality instead of a powerful mentality mentality. And so God led me to uh, Mark eleven twenty four through 25. It says, therefore I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them so that your Lord and Father in heaven may forgive you of your sins. And God just did a gut check in my heart right at that moment. He's like, you're standing here and you love me. But there are people in your life that you haven't forgiven. And that's, that sucked. Because God put a big old bullseye right there and said, what about this person? What about that person? And my flesh was like, no, 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 I don't want that. But God was highlighting people after people after people that I knew I had to go back in my life and say, God, I'm choosing to forgive those people. I know it's not easy. I know it's not fun. But yet God calls us to do that. Why? Because we're supposed to love our neighbor as ourselves. Like, that's the second and greatest commandment in all of the Bible. Love God, love others, and love yourself. Like, how do we do that? And what does that look like? And so God started working inside of me and showing me things. And at that time, I was doing some life coaching, and that was probably the best thing that ever happened to me. I was going and being life coached through a, a coach that I have in, uh, he lives in Phoenix, Arizona now. But um, in that process, God also brought me to Matthew 6, 9 through 15, and you guys should know this. This is how you shall pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our, forgive us, um, our debts as we also forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive other people what, when they sin against you, and your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others of, your fa- of others their sin, Father will not forgive you of your sin. And I always remember the first part of that scripture verse, the Lord's Prayer. And the Lord said, what about the rest of it? (laughs) All right. So at that moment, as I'm doing this, I'm like, God, I I forgive them. I said it, therefore it's done. You know? But it was something the Lord showed me, that it's not a, a quick one and done. It's a daily, weekly, monthly chore that's saying, God, I forgive them. God, I forgive them. God, I forgive them. God, I forgive them. I forgive them for saying those things to me. I forgive them for backstabbing me. I forgive them for saying those things. Because I wanted freedom in my own life, and and I wanted to reflect the glory of God 
But the only way I could do that is I had to release the things that were inside of me to be able to reflect God's glory. And I can't have crap in my life and junk and then be like, okay, here it is. I'm going to reflect God's glory. God takes us through a a refiner's fire to be able to process us that we may be able to reflect the glory of God. Just like gold, they turn up the heat and what happens, it gets all the, the junk and so they scrape off the junk and then they turn it up a little bit hotter and a little bit hotter. And God does that in our own lives. Because why? He wants us to come out to be able to reflect the very presence of Him. And I know that for myself, I want to reflect God's glory. That when people see me, they see Jesus. Because if I can do that, then I feel like I'm living what God's called me to live. I'd be the first one to admit, unless my wife starts hearing me say, I have issues, and she goes, I have, she can finish it. Yes, he has issues. But the thing is, is I know that I have issues. I know that I stumble. I know that I fall. But the thing is, is it's not how many times I stumble and fall. It's how many times I get back up from that situation. You know, Albert Einstein, how many times did he to fail at the light bulb, but yet he doesn't look like he failed. It was just ways not to do it. You know, it, it's changing your perspective and saying, what does it look like? If I can shift the way that I look at something and look at it through the way God sees it instead of through the way that I see it because of the lens that I'm wearing because of me being hurt and carrying around baggage in my own life, that if I look through God's lenses, it's totally different. The, the Bible says this in Ephesians 6. I didn't put it in my notes because I forgot to, so I'm going to have to read it off the thing. <laughs> For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of the dark, the dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. At the core, most people are very good people. And if we can see that and understand that, and then understand that scripture verse, that our battle is not against what? Flesh and blood? So when we get mad and my wife and I start getting in an argument... I've got to remember my battle's not against her, but it's the enemy that's trying to rob, steal, and destroy my life. My battle wasn't against my former pastor. My battle wasn't against my former whatever. My battle's against the enemy. Because at the core level, people are good people. And what happens is, is life happens. And so we react because of the lens that we see people through. And we need to take off the lens of ourselves and put on the lens of Jesus. Because the way that we see people would totally change. I'm not perfect at it. And I'm growing. But I know that God's continually doing a work in my life. Because I want my heart to break for what breaks the Lord. And I want my love to come from supernatural love that only comes from the Father. Because I have to forgive those people. So I realized that I had to forgive and forget. Oh, I said a word, forgive and forget but I can't forget what they did to me because if I forgot what they gave for me, then, then that means it's, it was okay. No, how many of us said amen when Jesus is the example? Jesus is the example. And what does he do? He forgives all of our trespasses. And that was one of the hardest things for me was like, I don't want to forget what they did to me. I don't. But it was my fleshly desire. And I'm telling you, there's most people will say, I don't want to forget. 
Why? Because we still have power in that. Or we think we have power. But when we let go and let God, God starts to do something in our lives. And we give it back to Him because of what Jesus wants to do. So as Jesus is the the prime example of what we do, as he hung on the cross for you, he wasn't like, oh, I remember Don, Don did this. No, he said, forgive them for they know not what they do. And I believe those words were for across all eternity. That as Jesus hung on that cross for you and me, he said, forgive them for they know not what they do. And I look at him and I say, Jesus, why? For how many times have I sinned against God? How many times have I looked at him and and spat in his face? Tanya, I've done it a lot. But he said, forgive them. For Bo doesn't understand what I'm doing right in this moment. Like, I'm hanging on the cross for him. And I understood that that God laid his life down for me and this unperfect person. He stood on the cross, hung on the cross for me that I may be able to see my heavenly Father one day because of the presence of God in my life, accepting Him into my heart. He's there saying, I, Bo hasn't done anything wrong. Like, he's coming to heaven. Why? Because I forgive him for all of his sins, all of his transgressions. And so I believe that Jesus is that prime example. Peter says this, then Peter, uh, this is Matthew 18, 21 through 22. Then Peter came to Jesus, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother and sister who sinned against me? Up to seven times? And Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. And I'm like, dang, that's a lot of times. But then I think how many times that I went to the Father and said, Father, forgive me. And then I turn around and do the stupid thing that I just asked God to forgive me for. Or how many times, I, I think about this even with my, my kids, is like, or me even growing up, of, Dad, forgive me. Uh, I didn't mean to do that. But I did, but I didn't mean to do that. And will you forgive me? And my dad's like, yeah, I forgive you. And then I turn around and do the exact same thing, and I know my dad's frustrated and angry at me and, and whatever. And so I'd get a whipping, and um, I got a lot of those growing up. But, um, and so I think of like even as a father, how many times I have to forgive my kids for what they've done. But then make it so much more. And I'm like, okay, how many times does my father in heaven forgive me for what I've done? In Psalms 103, 3 through 4, it says, Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases? Who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion? He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our own iniquities. For as high as the heavens above and the earth, so great is the love for the Father who fears him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. That's actually Psalms 103, 3 through 4, and 10 through 12. But he forgives us of our sins, heals us from all our diseases. He redeems our lives, and then what does he do? He crowns us with love and compassion. It's like, God takes us 
from the junk that we are and what we deserve because of our sinful nature. And says, it's okay. When we start to fear him, it's okay. Let me crown you because you are now an heir to the throne. An heir to me. I no longer call you a servant, but I call you son. I no longer call you a servant, but I call you daughter. Why? Because he loves you and cares for you. And these are things that God starts showing me, and I'm like, okay, I guess I, I guess I can forgive. I guess I can move on. I guess I could do that. So what I did is, um, in this process, I, I decided, um, I ta- was talking to my, my senior pastor in Nebraska, and I said, you know, I just real, I feel like God's doing some things inside of my heart and inside of my life, and I just really need to go out hunting. <laughs> Makes a lot of sense, right? So I love, if you don't know me well, I love to hunt. Um, it's borderline obsession. Um, I won't ever call it an obsession just because then Linda will hold that against me. So, um, but, um, yeah, I, I love to do it. I think about it every day. Um, and so I just compare it to John. Like, John likes to lift weights, you know, so I love to hunt. I'm just trying to get him not scared of bears, so here you go hunting with me. But... But um, I, it is, it's, it's, a, it's a borderline obsession. I do think about it a lot, and you can ask Linda, like it's all the time. Um, I'm already thinking about what, what's going to happen next year, and hunting season hasn't even started this year. So um, it's just the way my brain works. But um, so I was talking to my senior pastor. I said, I really feel like I need to go out to the woods, and I really need to um, just, just spend some time with the Lord. And, and so um, I left work early that day, and um, it was uh, September 22nd, um, ninth, or 2017. And, um, and so I, I left and went to the woods. And I sat in my tree stand, and I just said, Lord, um, I'm just going to go through different people. I really feel like I'm supposed to ask for forgiveness. Obviously, clearly, they weren't in the woods with me. But the thing was, is I decided I was going to be in a spot that I'm going to do this. And um, so I had to text my brother because there, there was a coach in college that I didn't, uh, or excuse me, a coach in high school. I couldn't remember his name. And so um, I started going through the process of each single person and calling them out by name. And I said, Coach Van de Cave, Lord, I forgive Coach Van de Cave for all the hurtful things that he said to me. I'm choosing to release these to you. All the hurt, all the pain, all the things, I'm choosing to give to you. And I went down to Coach Weston, and, and, um, and then I got to Coach Bippus, and I probably deserved a lot of things that hurt, some of the things that Coach Bippus said to me. But um, I'll tell you a short story about this on a little rabbit trail, just to give you a little bit more of a, my personality. Um, some of my friends and I were joking because I, I ran in high school, got a, co- got a college scholarship to run. And so um, I ran in college, and, um, and I did the triple jump, high jump, long jump, um, 200, 100, and, um, and that kind of stuff. And so anyways, he came out, and he was talking to somebody, and my friends and I were joking around, and he thought it was inappropriate, so he told me to run. And um, I looked at him, and I said, okay. And so I walked the first lap, and um, he told me to run, and I looked at him, I said, okay, and I walked the second lap. And um, I did that for four laps. Each time he told me to run faster, and I chose not to. Um, And so then uh, the the fifth lap, he told me to run. So what I did is I did this for a whole lap. And um, and so uh, he said I was going to be there all night long if I kept on doing what I was doing. So I'm like, oh, that's a challenge. Let's see what happens. So I did that another lap. And I did two miles total. Um, and then finally he's like, forget it, go home. I'm sick and tired of you. Um, and I never ended up running um, during that time. I always just walked a little bit faster. And so then the next day I had a meeting with him. 
um, after practice and well-deserved. But um, at this time, I look back and it was definitely well-deserved. But um, he told me his great-grandma could run faster than me. And I said, obviously. And then he, he proceeded to say, well, I could run faster than you with my, my, he had a suit coat on and dress pants. And I said, well, let's go out there and do it. Because I'm going to, he said he could do it, let's do it. And um, he turned it down. Um, but that was just, like, if you tell me I'm not going to do it, that's just, I ask Linda, like, I see a mountain, and I'm like, oh, there's an elk on the other side of that mountain. Let's go. And um, I've taken the Linda and the kids in a few spots that probably aren't the best or the safest because I'm looking for more elk. <laughs> but for me, so I'm sharing that part of that story. If some of the things that were said, they're definitely my fault. Like, I definitely poked the bear when the bear couldn't be poked or shouldn't have been poked. But the thing is, is I, I said, Lord, I just, I pray for Coach Bippus right now. I pray you bless him. Lord, I pray that you minister to him wherever he's at. And I'm choosing to release that hurt and pain and that bitterness that I've held on to for so long. And, um, and so I just, I'm giving it all to you. And, um, and then I, I proceeded to just say, Lord, I, I just ask that, uh, that buck that I've been seeing, you know, like I'm thinking, sweet, like I'm going to throw this prayer in there so I can, you know, do this. And I've been seeing a buck that's, was, that's been coming in on my trail camera, and I'm like, Lord, you know, could you just bring it in between 7.15 and 7.30 so then I know that it's the right buck, and, um, and then I could look at it every day and know that um, that's, the, that's the day I forgave, you know, everybody. And so 7.18... This buck comes walking in, and um, it's the buck I was after. It's not a huge, huge whitetail, but it's something that I, like, knew that I wanted to get this buck. So 718, the buck walks in, and um, stood perfectly broadside at 25 yards, and I shot him. So I have it, I have it hanging on my wall at home because I knew that that day was a day that I would always remember the day that I forgave the people, the day that I forgave them for what they did to me. But for me, releasing that bitterness and that hate and that frustration because I chose to let it go. And so then I laid hands on my body and I said, Lord, I just pray for anything that is um, caused by this pain this hurt, this bitterness, this frustration, this anger towards these people, I just release it to you. And if there's anything in my body that has caused me pain or hurt or whatever because of me holding on to this bitterness, I release it to you right now. In honest to God truth, I was watching Sid Roth, It's Supernatural, and there was a guy previously that week that had a supernatural weight loss moment and I really did feel like God was going to give me supernatural weight loss because I hated running from that day, like from college on. It did not happen. But what did happen was this, is that my knees were completely healed. That I have no longer knee issues. I was had from all the pounding, the triple jump, the plyometrics, everything. Um, my knees bothered me every time I ran. And God healed me from, from that on that day. And so I've been able to run, hike, whatever, without any issues. Why? Because I believe that God healed me 100% that day. And I believe that God wants to heal you guys this morning. And so I'm going to ask uh, Don, you come up, and, and I'm just going to ask Don to play some music. But I know that there are people in this room, and actually I know there's all of us, that have things that have happened in our lives that God has maybe even highlighted you to ask for forgiveness. And they may not be in this room, but it is okay. Because we come from a powerful perspective that says, I'm choosing to release them for what they did to me. Because we don't need to live in a victim mentality where it says, oh, this person hurt me, even though it's easier to live in that mentality. It is. It's easier, but it's not as powerful. I choose, I choose to forgive, 
two years ago, I had my parents come out. And I made a joke about being spanked a lot. That's a vivid memory in my life. I got spanked a lot. And I held on to a lot of bitterness and frustration towards my parents. So two years ago, I said, Mom and Dad, I, I want to let you know that I'm releasing you of this. I do not want to hold on to this bitterness and frustration and hate towards you. I'm choosing to release you of it. Because there's not a day that I don't remember that I didn't get spanked. And probably well deserved at times. For sure. But the thing was is that I held on to that because of the, the easier to be a victim. Well, it was my parents' fault. My parents did. Let me tell you, my parents did the best they knew how to do to raise me. It may not have been exactly the way that I wanted it, obviously, but they did the best they knew how to raise me. And I'm doing that with my kids. And so that day, I chose to forget my parents. And it wasn't easy. They were there with me. My coaches and other people were not, as I sat in that tree stand. Some of you this morning, God has highlighted people inside of your life that you need to choose to forgive. They just need to open up your hands like this. Say, Lord, I just pray right now. And I choose to forgive. You fill in the blank. I choose to forgive so and so for the hurt and pain that they caused me. I release that hurt and pain it to you and I lay it at your feet. hands on your body and say, Lord, if there's anything that's kept me from not being able to fulfill what you've called me to do because of whatever reason it is, because of this bitterness and hate and frustration, whatever, I release it to you. I pray you heal my body. you 
dreams to leave the past in the past and press on to the freedom that they have in you. Lord, we just thank you. We just thank you for loving us the way that you love us. Your son's precious and holy name. guys have a blessed week this week. I just pray that God blesses you, that his face may shine upon you, and that wherever you go, that you will feel the tangible presence of God. God bless. You guys have an awesome week. See you next week for the potluck afterwards, and having community.